The application of scripture is in three ways. Number one, it's historic. It's happened. It's history. Number two, it's doctrine. You preach it and teach it to what God intended it to be. You got to rightly divide it. Number three, you can spiritually apply a, the passage. In other words, spiritually preaching and teaching is not good doctrine. And good doctrine is not good preaching. Now, I say that because we're going to pick up in Matthew 25, 14. And I have spiritually taught this section and preached this section about man and his talents and given account to God. It's not. Now, as I said previous with the ten virgins, there's no way you could even spiritually apply that to the Christian today. Even if you say, you know, you know, they're they're gonna have the oil of, of you know for the Holy Spirit. Yeah, you can't say a Christian doesn't have the Holy Spirit. This section here is you can spiritually apply it to a man in his talents. But doctrinally, which goes against preaching, and preaching goes against doctrine, it's the nation of Israel giving an account of themselves to God. Now, the talents is kind of funny because it's both Jewish or Hebrew and Roman money. And it's funny, the counterpart of Luke 19, which we're not going to look at, it's given to pounds, which is a money of England. So you got talents of the Hebrew and Roman money. And you've got in Luke 19, you got the pounds of the English money. Now, I will take the when I preach this message anywhere, I will take the talents as can you play a musical instrument? Can you sing? Can you preach? Can you can you build things? Can you you know, take care of things for Christians. But the passage doctrinally is money. God has reckoned to the Jews money. So for the kingdom of heaven, heaven, you know, trees grow in heaven, and, you know, bears walk in heaven, and whales swim in heaven. As a man traveling to a far country, that man is God, that man is Jesus. Far country would be heaven. Other places in the scripture, it's not heaven. One place, it's Babylon. Now, you're not going to reference Babylon, no way, no how, to heaven. No way, no how, you're going to reference heaven to Babylon. Unless you're the Baptist church and you picked up the Babylonian practices. But I'm going to be nice. Who called his servants. Okay, Christians are servants. Well, we are, but we're not. Jesus said in John, you're no longer servants, you're friends. A servant doesn't know what the master is doing, but friends do. We are friends, according to John. Servants is somebody who's under the labor of a master. Rabbi, master. God is the great master. And deliver unto him his goods, his merchandise. This would be like Joseph taking care of Potiphar's goods. Unto one he gave five talents, and that's that's money. All right, five talents. He play. He can play a musical instrument. He can sing. Uh, you know, being a choir, he, he can. He's got things to do. He can do things. To another he gave two. All right, you know, maybe he can do only two things. And to another, one. So there's five, two, and one. I believe the, the one in Luke 19, I believe they're giving the same amount. So I'm going to, as I go along with, I'm going to go with both aspects. I'm going to go with the doctrinal teaching and the spiritual teaching. So there are three men. They are given talents of money by God. There are three men. They are given abilities by God. And there have been plenty of, I got one person in mind, I won't give their name. There have been plenty of singers who come out of a Baptist church 
They could be saved. I, I'm, I'm not going to be the judge. And at one moment in time, they've taken their music ability, singing to God in a choir, doing special music for God, and they turn around and use it for the world. They end up dead. And they're going to go to heaven, and they're going to have no rewards for their singing that God gave. Every man saved or lost, you are born with a talent. Some more than others. That's don't say it's prejudice. That's just how things go. To every man according to his several ability. Now, you've got to realize you've got to learn. All right, you know, you may not be capable of singing in choir. You may not be capable of playing an instrument for God. You might be able to hand, swing a hammer. You might be able to drive. You might be able to work the sound booth. You may be able to do a job of the church and for Christ. No one ever sees. Or you could be up there where everyone sees. Straightway took his journey. Then he that received the five talents went and traded with the same. He did business. He did investing. And made them after I mean, excuse me, him other five times. He gets 100% of what was given to him. And there are Christians who have given the talents of God back to God for the service of Christians 100%. They don't use their talents for the world. They don't use their talents for the wicked. They give their talents to God. And there are Christians, they'll take their talents, they will go up, they will, they will do for the Christians, they will do for the church, and then they'll take their talents to the world. They'll have part Christian duty to the Lord, and they'll part, have part duty to God, to the world, and entertainment and pleasures and all that. That's not 100%. Likewise, he that had two also gained two other. That's 100%. The five got five, that's 100%. The two got two, that's 100%. Don't say because he's got five, because he's got two. They both brought 100%. But he that had one went and digged in the earth. What are you doing? And hid his Lord's money. So what this guy has done. He's taken whatever's given. That one talent. He's given it to the earth. To the worldly. He's dug it deep in the world. And it's hid from the Lord. And there's a lot of Christians. Who have been given talent. There's a lot of unsaved people. They've given their talent to the earth. To the world. You can have five or you can have two and bring off a hundred percent both. And and you can have the one. Now the reason why he got one one is because the Lord already knew what they would do. God already knows our life before we're conceived. So it's kind of interesting that when that happens, if you go to Joshua, there's an interesting man, Joshua chapter 7, and we're not going to read the whole chapter, Joshua chapter 7, if you know Achan, Achan, I'm mean, Achan 21, Joshua 21, When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver, a wedge of gold, 50 shekels weight. Now pay attention to the shekels. Then I coveted them, took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of the tent. God said, everything of Jericho is not yours. It's mine. 
Achan said, well, look at that garment, the gold, and so the shekel. Okay? So when you come over here and look up Webster's 1828 Dictionary, and why do I have colon? Um, okay, looking at something today. Colon. We don't want colon. Among the ancients, a weight and a coin. Okay. The Romans had a great talent and a little talent. The great talent computed to whatever that is, whatever that is. The talent among the Hebrews was also a gold coin. The same was a shekel of gold. But the talent of silver is called a sycar, for the talent of, of, of gold was called a, a starker. The Hebrew silver was called a sycar. It was equivalent to 3,000 shekels, or 113 pounds. Pounds is Luke. These parables run together. It's a shekel. Achan had a shekel. Hidden in the earth like this man had. Now, Achan had a little more than this man. He had gold, silver, and a Babylonian garment. He put it in the earth. That's what it means. He don't want nobody to see it. He doesn't want to have anything to do with it. Earth is the, is the world. It's dirty. It's filthy. But well, we know what he did with his coins. When he brought it before the Lord, it had dirt on it. He didn't use it for the Lord at all. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh. Second Advent. To spiritually apply it would be when Jesus comes to judge the seat of Christ. For the Christians. And reckon with them. All right, You're going to give account. What did you do with it? How did you do with it? Why did you do it? The who, what, where, when, and why of your talents God's given you. For the Hebrew... For the Christian and for the unsaved. This can apply for all three. You're even going to give account of your talents at the judgment seat of Christ, whether you're Hebrew or, or Gentile saved, or you're going to give an account at the great white throne judgment, whether you're Hebrew or Gentile. Saved or lost, you are there are lost people who are given talents. And it's remarkable in the music industry. You look it up, uh, uh, Alice Cooper, grandfather and father were preachers. Isn't that interesting? And God gave him a talent. Listen, Alice Cooper has a talent. He makes money. He gave his talents to the devil. Like Jesus said, hey, if you fall down and worship me, I'll give you all this. And these rock stars, they fall down, they worship Lucifer, and they get everything. Only temporary. What's in heaven, what's in heaven lasts. Everything for Christ will last. Everything for self in the world and everything else doesn't last. So he reckons with him, give an account. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents. So here's five, here's five more. Saying, Lord. Well, we can say Lord. He's our Lord, God, and Savior. The Jew can say Lord. They've been saying Lord all through the Gospels. Thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I've gained beside them five talents more. Now, in the law of the Jews, they were not to use usury or interest of fellow Jews. So this man went to the, if he is law abiding, he went to the Gentiles and he charged them interest. He traded and got more. And he gained. A Christian can take what God's given him, five talents, exactly five talents. He will give those five talents to the service of Jesus somehow, some way, how he can do it. Now, see, now, here's where the trouble goes. When you teach it spiritually among the church. 
he may not gain another five talents. You may be stuck with where you're at. You may say, you know what? Okay, I can play a guitar. You know, I'm going to try to learn a language so I can use it for the Lord's glory and bomb out, bomb out. You don't learn that language. And you get to heaven and the Lord's giving you five talents. That's all you have is five talents. And you give it to him. That's 100%. That don't make five more. Like the parable. So see, there are troubles when you try to spiritualize a doctrinal passage. You run into trouble. Doctrinal does not make good preaching and good preaching does not make doctrinal statements. Because if somebody really know the Bible, they say, and I get up there and say, you know, you got five talents, and you use your five talents for Jesus Christ, you'll get gold, silver, precious stones, and, and the guy may be thinking in that pew or in the chair, say, well, you know, I can gain five more like that guy did, and get to heaven and bomb because you tried, but that's not what the Lord wanted you to do. Oh, boy, you see, you run into trouble. You run into trouble. You know who the Jews are to be of the world? They're to be the financial advisors. They're to be the ones with the money. When I grew up as a child, I remember when I we went to the we went to the store. You didn't have the store. Say so you went to the store you, when you went to the meat department. You went to the butcher. The butcher the butcher would cut that that meat right in front of you, and he put it in the scale. Is that what you want? He said oh, a little bit less, and he cut it. You know, is that what? That's what I. And he put it in white paper and tie it. That butcher was a Jew. How do you know he was a Jew? Because that's what the law taught them to do. How to cut beef. How to cut lamb. What, what parts of the meat. That's the entire Old Testament. You ain't going to find that mess today. The, the grocery stores, it's all a mess. You don't even know what your food is. You don't even know what that animal has been eating. But he's gained five more. Now, as a Christian, don't think you're going to get five more. But your reward will be abundant if you use the five that God's given you. You'll get five more in gold, silver, precious stone where you don't have gold, silver, and precious stone. And we just learned that the Hebrew talent is measure of gold and silver. The Christian is gold, silver, precious stone. Whether you were a Hebrew or whether you were a Gentile saved. You get an addition. You get precious stone. Achan the loser had gold and silver. And a garment. Whoa, whoa. We get garments. Fine linens and righteousness of the saints. And his Lord, small L, said unto him, well done. That's what I want God to say to me. I would be completely satisfied with well done. Your, your worldly Christians will be well done as the steak. The steak, the best of the world. When, and and I, don't, I don't know if God's going to say well done to Christians, but that, that's, a good, that's a good thought. Spiritually applies in the passage, not doctrinally applying the passage. To say well done to a Jew would be, a Hebrew would be, Hey, you, God is completely, absolutely adored because you are his people and you have done exactly what God told you to do. That's what pleases the Lord. Thou good and faithful servant. That can be a Christian. Thou has been faithful over a few things. That can be a Christian. One. Two, five towns. If only if you can only do one thing, which I don't believe nobody has one talent. But if you give that one talent, that two talent to the Lord, as a Christian, everything you do, that's a good and faithful servant. Because I know guarantee within time, Satan in the world will take that talent, however they are, and he will try to entice you to take that talent, and you can make money. You can get people to clap at you. You can get all great, wonderful benefits. 
You can get up the corporate ladder. You can get everybody clapping at church. And there's people who lose their job. When you get up there, I mean, what's the thing with clapping in churches? We're down here in Florida. They do that in Florida. We didn't do that in, up in New England. I'm telling you, I'm disgusted with Florida. I am absolutely disgusted with the worship of God in Florida. Up in New England, we didn't clap. And if you give your singing for the Lord, and I don't care, I don't care if you can't sing. If you give it to the Lord, God is honored by that. Now you get up there and play the piano, whatever you got. You get up this so people can see you. You're getting no reward. If you are in your, your Sunday school class and you say or memorize a scripture so you can get a Tootsie Roll, that's your reward. And when you get that, well, I memorized that scripture, Lord. You did it for the Tootsie Roll. Did you enjoy it? Now, see, your motive has got to be why and how and where and what you did with your talent. God would be well pleased for a woman to be in the kitchen making dinner for her family, singing and glorifying God as much as up at, at, at the altar of the Lord of the church. At the church, okay, she's doing it for others to be, but in the house, she's doing it just for the Lord. God would be more honored if you are in your bedroom, on your knees, on your bedroom, lay, sit on your bed, laying your bed, however precision. He would be more honored if you sat there and prayed to him over all the prayers you have. As much as the pastor said, you know, brother, will you pray? Open up the service. And there are some people you can tell by their prayer. They want to be heard. And there are some people get there, they're stuttering, they're puttering, they're, they're nervous and all that, and they get it the best to what God's given them. God says, I like that. That other one, whatever God's given you, use it for God alone. And I mean alone. Do it for God when no one else is around as much as you do it for someone else. I mean, if a Christian saint, and I come from New England, unable, sick, or elderly, and all that, go sweep, I mean, go shovel her driveway and sidewalk with no one watching you. Then show up for church and shovel the driveway and sidewalks with whoever shows up. I'm telling you, in New England, I know pastors who have gone to a widow's elderly person's house, ripped their entire toilet up, fixed the entire toilet, the floor and everything like that. I don't think your floor, the preachers would do that. Most of them can't even show up to church Sunday night. Some of them, you know, they don't even show up Wednesday night. Some of them, COVID-19 drove them away. You know, the last Super Bowl we have, there was a time when, when the church brought the Super Bowls into the church. The last Super Bowl, not this year, last year. You know, there was no there was no churches, but there was a Super Bowl. What God has given you, give to the Lord. Now, listen, if you can do finances, take care of the church, church books. And then, all right, if you're an accountant, make money being an accountant. That's your calling. But be accountant for the Lord in your church to help your church. I don't know who the accountant is in my church. He doesn't make a big deal. And he's hopefully doing it for the Lord. I know some accountants. Oh, boy. You ain't going to get a Lord's reward. I know some people who, who will mow the lawn, and nobody knows who mows the lawn for the church. They, mow, they may go mow Christians' lawns that, that can't do it. Who knows? If you don't know what that Christian is doing, and he's doing it for the Lord, he's going to get rewards. Now, you get the Christian comes in, you know, he's going to have the slap on the back. He's going to have the pastor say something, and blah, blah. No, 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 no. That's why sometimes when I'm 
preaching or teaching, and I give an illustration of something that like bothers me. There, there are sometimes I've helped homeless people. And I'm teaching a message about giving and homeless people. I will tell you what I've done. And I feel bad because, Lord, I don't want to say, look at what me is doing. I'm looking as an example. Sometimes I won't even mention I, but I know in my heart I'm talking about me. you got to be careful. If you're going up there for the people to look at you, if you're doing it for the people to see what you're doing and gratification, <coughs> you are in the street corner. And you got that long, big, loud prayer, Jesus said. You got your reward, hypocrite. If you got your face looking, oh, look at me, I'm fasting, oh, for me, woe is me. All right, that's your reward. You walk in the church, you're happy, glory to God, and everything like that. And the Lord knows that person's suffering, that person's got problems, but they, that can't be me. Now, that's my mom who's saved. My mom's got me. She, she's got all kinds of health problems. She's alone and she's financial enough, and she's happy and glory in the Lord. I'm like, oh, Lord, teach me how to be like my mom. I don't handle troubles and problems well. You may be talking to Christian. They're glory and they're glad. They don't, you say, you know, how you doing? And they're saying, I'm doing well. Forgive me for the Lord for our sin. I lie. And they're not doing well. That's a talent. Talent to be humbled. Me, you ask me how I'm doing, I'm going to give you the whole story. Sometimes before I go to church, I'm like, Lord God, please let them not ask me how I'm doing, because I don't want to lie. So he says, I will make the ruler over many things. And th this is where the Christians get the rulership over cities. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. If you use your talents for God, You'll get joy. If you don't use it for the Lord, I mean, you're going to go to heaven. But when you've got nothing on your head for crowns, I don't know how that's going to be in heaven. When, when we cast our crowns at Jesus and you ain't got none, that ain't joy. Now, you're going to take some of your crowns and you're going to use it for your, listen, you're not perfect. He that had received two talents came and said, Lord, again, thou doest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other, 100%, just like the five got five. He's two, he got two. Other talents beside them. Now, as a Christian, maybe you can do what God's told you to do and everything God's given. Maybe you say, you know what? Maybe I will learn a language. And maybe God will take that what you learn, and use it to his ability, boom, you gained the talent. Don't say completely, well, you know, I only, only think what I got. Try to earn others. I never played a guitar in mine. I tried to learn the guitar. I learned how I learned how the guitar, you guys spend a lot of time with that. That ain't me. So I gave the guitar to, to Christian for a Christian service. That's the only thing I could do. A talent is, you know, you're, you're sitting in church one day and the pastor says, hey, listen, can I talk to you? Yeah. Hey, listen, I got I, I need a Sunday school teacher. And I think, you know, you will you do it? Hey, you just gained the talent. Use it. The worst thing you could do is say, you know, Pastor, I tried. I'm, I'm a problem. The pastor may help you. He may gain, and you may gain that talent. If you take what you got and give it to the Lord and, it, and try to learn other things. So you could get more, or you may not get more as a Christian. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter down the church. He gets the same thing the guy with five that with the two got. So don't think you're going to get to heaven. You're the world's greatest preacher. And you're going to get the exceptional blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ for all the people. You know. You're going to get the same thing the guy had six people. Listen, I have been in prison ministry, and I've had two or three men there 
And I had a better gracious and, and thankful time with the Lord Jesus with those three men than I had a whole room of men. That whole room of, of people uh, that, that are going to listen, you may get high on yourself. Oh, look, look how great they're all coming to hear me. And you get the guy, one or two people, say, Lord God, thank you. Just give me one or two people. Let me deal with their hearts. See, you can't take your talents and blow your head up. You can't take your talents and use them for pride. Because then you lose. Then he which received the one talent. I do better with this message when I'm preaching about talent. Than trying to explain it. I can get up and preach this message about, about talents and giving to the Lord much better than I am right now than, than explain it. And the Lord may say, hey, listen, I, I know how many times you preach this message. And you're doing better teaching than you did preaching. Some preachers, their talent is not preaching. They're a good teacher, but not a good preacher. Uh-oh. Hate to have to give up that seat on the altar. You may be a good preacher and not a good teacher. You may be a good singer, but not a good preacher, not a good teacher. You may be a good preacher, but not a good singer or teacher. You could be a good teacher, a good preacher, but not a good singer. You got to juggle those things around in prayer. Because you may be doing something in your Christian life and you think it's a talent. And, and no, you're causing more harm than good. That ain't a blessing. If you are driving people away from God by a talent that you don't have. And you take that with all these mega churches. Listen, I'm going to tell you something right now. A woman can preach. But the Bible says she's not to preach. A woman can teach. A woman is great for, for kindergarten. But God says you're not to usurp the authority. If you got men in a congregation that's older than you, lady, you need to step out. God says you can teach the younger. Titus. So I don't care if you're a good teacher, whatever you are, a good preacher. If you're defying the scriptures, you're doing no good at all. You're doing more harm than good. I think Billy Graham was a great preacher. But I think he took his talent and went with, oh, with the presidents and with the kings and queen, with, with the ecstasy of, of the dinners and all that. I think he sold it out. I'm going to say he was a good preacher. But then he wrote his book and, and there was lies in there about the angels in heaven and stuff like that. And then he'll tell you, you know, now that you found Jesus, find the church of your own choice. Brother, you sold out. There's some preacher. Oh, you, it's our church. Church, Find the church. Find the church. Find the church. I said, listen, we're in Daytona Beach, Florida. Yeah. I preach on the street. Yeah. If I meet somebody at NASCAR, if I meet somebody at Bike Week and they're from Nebraska, they're not interested in your church in, in Daytona Beach or Volusia County. I'm going to do whatever I can to find where they live and find a King James Bible-believing church as close as the, to their home that they can. Never mind your Volusia County church. And there would be some pastors out there, maybe not Volusia County, but, you know, it you move and come to our church. <laughs> really? You mean a David Koresh now? For he that had received one talent. Now remember, the five brought five, 100%. The two brought two, 100%. The one talent came and said, Lord. They all say, Lord. I knew Thee that thou art a heart. Now he's talking to God. He's talking to Jesus. This would be a Pharisee when you go scripture with scripture. 
you know, God's such a hard man and all that. So, you know, rules and he's a hard man. Reaping where thou hast not sown. Well, you know, listen, if I take this talent and I use it for you, you're not doing nothing, God. Ooh, whoa. Don't put me in that shoes, please. I'm doing all this work and you're not doing no work, Lord. Well, wait a minute. If it's salvation, it's the Holy Spirit that draws. It's Jesus that saves. If it's playing the piano, it's God that's giving you your, your ability. God could take that little pea brain of yours and he can give you a clot and give you a stroke and you won't be able to use your right hand. God could give you a heart attack. God can do anything. God would show you how quick if he wanted to. And how the talents are not yours, but his. I wonder how many pastors today are sitting back with no more ministry thanks to COVID-19. What was COVID-19? A flu. What's a flu? It's a virus. A virus has driven men and Christians out of the church today. There's still churches that are closed and been closed because of COVID. There are businesses that are closed and still closed because of COVID. God did a great job. There are people here in Florida that are still without a home, still without resources because of the two hurricanes that came, I was it September? And we're going to give money for the bikers to come. And we're going to give money and things for the NASCAR track. But we ain't giving no more money to the victims of a hurricane. That shut down last Friday, I believe. The Office of, of, of Emergency Management closed last. Well, you still can go online. That does you a lot of good if you ain't got no more computer. If you ain't got electricity. You don't know what resources you've got because the government is not going to walk down your street and preach, this is the number, this is the www dot, like a preacher would say, this is the way to heaven. The government ain't going to do that. Matter of fact, I read today something, I didn't read the story. The IRS has told people in Florida, hold off on your taxes for a while. Okay. Well, I got mine done. I knew that are hard men. Now, remember, he's talking. To, the parable is about a man, but it's Jesus. You're a hard man. That's the Pharisee talking. Reaping where thou has not re You're gaining crops, and you did not sow them. That's what a master does. He's got a bunch of field hands that does the work for him. You never heard Joseph complaining about Potiphar. Joseph was a faithful man. We're talking about a Jewish man, Joseph, because we're talking to Jewish people in Matthew. And there will be Christians that will say, being a Christian is so hard, so demanding, no fun. I'm going to go out in the world. I'm going to give my talents to the world. And people are going to love me. They're going to reach out, grab my underwear. They're going to want me to, to sign their name. The girls are going to surround me. The girls want to go to bed with me. Everybody adore me. My posters will be in their rooms. And their, my CDs will be in their, their cars playing my song. And that pastor told me, no, I couldn't do a special Sunday night because they're doing a special. That's hard. I had a church where a woman left the church because we had we had two pianos, we had three piano players, and the pastor wouldn't let her play the piano one night. She left. You're a hard man, won't let me play. <laughs> no, who's the hard person? And gathering where thou hast not struck. You are doing things. You are reaping the benefits, God. But you didn't do nothing. Well, let me tell you something about God. Let me give you a Bible chapter. Okay? Genesis 1. God created everything. Everything came from God. 
those Tonys, those Oscars, the the, the whatever they call the, the Super Bowl trophy and all that, that came from the dirt, that came from God, Genesis chapter 1. Okay? And he allowed you to get that worldly trophy, which will do you no glory in heaven or hell. And I was afraid. Well, evidently, Jewish writings, particularly Proverbs, he wasn't afraid of the Lord because the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. He was afraid of what? Not getting recognition. Not being noticed. And went and hid thy talent in the earth, the world. I know of a woman who was in a Baptist church, grew up singing her songs on the radio that I would listen to as a child. And they found her dead in a bathtub. I don't want to mention her name. She was a wonderful, fine woman. But she left the Baptist church. And if you go look, and you look, if you do an autobiography or a biography of some of your singers, you will find many of them came out of a church. They came out of Christianity. You take, I mean, not Christianity, but you take Madonna. She was a Catholic nun. She came out. She came out of hell and went into hell, right back into hell. There thou hast that design. Here's your talent. Didn't do me no good. Well, that's a man who's been in hell for a period of time before the great white throne judgment. What, what's his rock music? What's his rap music? What's his country music? What, what's the disco music? What is the slow playing? What is the classical music that you played for the world and end up in hell? Hondo. You know his hallelujah chorus and, and the Messiah giving all to God. King James Bible believing verses. It's a one. You put that on your YouTube and you start reading your Bible and you just, you're in heaven. I'm in heaven. And you get that other classical music. And you, dun, 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 dun. I mean, that can get you going, but what did it do for the, for the writer who used it for the world? Well, you know, the stars and stripes forever. Okay, that's All right, America, boom, yay. Get the cannon, kaboom. But what's that do for God? And what did that do for the writer? Here's the question. Your talent. Where does it do you Wherever you are in eternity. That's the question. Can you take your talent and be in New Jerusalem with gold, silver, or precious stone? Can you take your talent and get to heaven, have someone wrap your arms around you and say, thank you. Because of you, I have gotten saved. Because of you, I have grown in the Lord and I got crowned. The Lord answered and said unto him. Now watch the Lord answering. Thou wicked and slothful servant. You can have wicked and slothful servants in the church. They're not there Sunday morning. They're at the football stadium. They're not there Sunday morning. They're out on a cruise. They're anywhere but where they should be in the Lord. They read the, the, the uh, used to be tel, uh, TV guide when I I don't know what it is today. They read the television guide more than they read the Bible. They know uh, it's amazing. I when I worked at the newspaper, there was these guys there. They knew every single stat of any professional ball game. I don't care if it was baseball, football, whatever. They knew the stats, but I bet you they couldn't tell you the 12 disciples. I bet you they couldn't tell you the 12 tribes of Israel. I bet you they couldn't tell you what Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Thou knewest 
that I reap where I sow not. Look what Jesus said. Now, Paul said, I had planted Apollo's war. God gave the increase. Don't you dare, don't you ever dare take God out of the equation. But what Jesus is saying here, you know what the hard work? Yeah, you you reap, you sold. Thou knowest that I reap where I sold not, and gathered where I have not struck. Okay. Yes, you did the work. God gives the increase, but you ain't going to get no reward for your work, for your labor. That's given over to the devil. Thou oughtest, this is what you, therefore I put my money, so there's, look, see, it's money. It's not playing the piano, singing, doing the books. So if I preach the message and say, talents is, you can sweep, you can mow the lawn, you can teach, I have a problem with verse 27, don't I? So guess what I do when I preach 20, Matthew 25? I don't mention 27. I don't have to mention 27 because I'm spiritualizing. I am not doctoralizing. Now, doctoralizing is going 14 to 20, I mean 14 to 30. That's doctrinized. Without missing a period, without missing a tittle, without missing a dot. That's doctrinal teaching. Now, spiritually, 14 to 26, I'm done with my message. Somebody said, well, what about 27? It says money. You tried to change the subject. Because I'm not, I'm spiritually applying the application. I'm not teaching it doctrinally. Doctrinally teaching, all right, the talents are money. It's not playing a guitar. It's not a piano. It's not doing prison Wednesday night. I don't even mean, you don't even have to be the preacher. Maybe you're just there to be there to help. Maybe you're there. Hey, listen, a talent could be at a nursing home, at a prison, at church. You go up beside the person, they're having a hard time, and you turn to Matthew 25 for them. That's a talent. You know where the places are in the Bible. Many do not. That's a talent. Don't underestimate your talents. But doctor, okay, here we go. We are done with spiritually applying the message. Here's doctrine. What we just read, talent is money, whether it be Hebrew or it be Roman. To the exchangers. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Here we go again. Here we go again. Didn't Jesus go into the temple and kick over all the tables of the exchangers? Jesus has said, you take my money and put it to the exchangers. Okay, we got contradiction. No, there's no contradiction. You take your money to exchanges, you earn money. Evidently, in the temple, they were defrauding, deceiving probably had false balances, book of Proverbs, that the people were being cheated. The Jew in the law is told that when you do your business, you do it faithfully, you do it correct, you do not charge interest or usury to a fellow Jew, but to the Gentiles, you're allowed to. That's what, the, that's what Jesus is saying right there. There's no contradiction. The exchangers at the temple were fraud in some way. And Jesus said, there's a way to take your money and no fraud. Now, what they charge you in interest today with credit cards and all that, that's a fraud. And then at my coming, second advent. I should have received my own with usury. He's telling that Jew, use usury. Violation of the law is usury for Jews so evidently the practice is for the Romans so the definition of talent is Hebrew and Roman coins uh, uh, Webster's 1828 and I didn't have to teach you the Hebrew and I didn't have to teach you the Greek or Roman Webster's 1828 dictionary did it for you 
So what we read from 14 to 27, we're talking about Jews. Doctrine. There is no order to the Gentiles on how they do money. That's not in the law, because the law is for the Jew. See that? Got that? Name. Matthew is for the Jews. Matthew 25. The ten virgins, Jewish. I spiritualize verse 14 to 26. And I didn't do harm to the scriptures. I also didn't do very good to the doctrinal practice. Again, doctrine don't make good preaching, or good preaching don't make doctrine. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it to him that has ten talents. Now your American would say, that ain't fair. <clears throat> We're not in America. You know, I'm going back to the Christian now. I'm going back... <laughs> I'm going back to spiritualize. I believe that, the, that the, the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. I believe there are going to be Christians who are going to be upset. How come he got something and I didn't? Well, I'm a preacher. He, he got more than I, what I did. And I had thousands. I had. They're looking at themselves. They're looking at what they're doing, not what. That guy with the very few, he's looking at what Jesus done. And give it to him that has five talents. For unto everyone that hath shall be given. And the context is, has what? It has the talents. If he has no talents, he ain't getting nothing. Well, you say, well, okay, Stalin, what about the guy with one talent? He's got one talent. He just lost it. What's he have? I'll show you in a moment. He shall have abundance. But from him that has not, okay, that man that had the one talent has nothing now, shall be taken away even that which is he, he has. So it comes down to, I believe, doctrine, and spiritually applying, if you show up at either judgment and you got exactly what God has given you and you did not do anything with it for God and Jesus Christ, you're a loser. Oh, you could be saved and go off into New Jerusalem and still be a loser. There are saved people at the Great White Throne Judgment too. That one man had a talent, he put it in the world, and he came out zero. Even though he had one, it was taken from him. Because it was not given to the Lord. Christians, spiritualizing again, are going to have talents, and on the books is going to be, you have nothing, because everything's been wood, hay, and stubble, no gold, silver, precious stone, it's ashes. You don't get nothing for ashes. Now, okay, spiritualizing. I got a big boo-boo right now. Here comes the big boo-boo. And cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing. That's hell. So if a Christian doesn't do anything with his ta talents, he goes to hell. Oh, boy, you see the trouble? You see the trouble with spiritualizing and doctrine? No Christian goes to hell. So if I'm teaching verses 14 to 27, I'm definitely not going down to 30. I will stop at 27 and you know pack up, we pray and have, you know, closing, see if anybody wants to come to Christ, and then we go home. I don't do 28, 29, and 30. Doctrinally, for the Jew. In the tribulation period, whatever God's given to, if he still has the same amount, and if he's put it in the world, he ends up in hell. 
He's a Jew. He's of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That rich man in hell in Luke said, Father Abraham. <laughs> that guy was a Jew. That guy had a lot more talents than Lazarus the bum. That rich man says, what am I going to do? I'll tear down everything. I'll build bigger. He had all kinds of talents. And God said, you end up in hell tonight. And he has not, he's in hell today, stark naked, nothing. You know what? Somebody took his goods. Somebody took his house. Somebody took his wealth. Look, look at the pharaohs. They had all the riches. They even mummified their kitty cats. He's in hell, stark naked, and the museums has their, and the grave robbers has their stuff. Don't you see that in this parable? Now, actuality of a Christian, he don't go to hell. He just has no rewards, no crowns. If you're under the law, in the tribulation period, and you have nothing to show, whether you have one, because you would think in the tribulation period that God is giving you a talent to help your fellow Jews, and you feared. Remember, he says, I fear. Maybe he feared the Antichrist. Maybe he feared the people laughing. Maybe he feared. Fear will get you not to do nothing for God. Fear is a sin. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and a sound mind. Now, I'm not saying, hey, fear is absolutely real. 